So uh, this lecture uh, video is a continuation of the previous um, uh, video where we started with, if we go all the way back, the Leonard Weckert potentials, um, V and A, and then wanted to find what is the um, electric field. So we used this equation right here. And when we did that, the first term we looked at was the gradient um, of the potential right here, which turned out to contain um, essentially uh, this gradient right here, which when we worked it out, um, has uh, basically this term right here, and it has these four terms right here. So in the previous uh, video, I worked out all four of those terms. So if we now go through um, what those terms are, um, the first term turns out to be this with the acceleration. The second term turns out to be um, this right here. The third term, which has the cross product in it, so the cross product of the velocity works out to this right here. And the fourth term, which has the cross product of the distance, um, turns out to be just the gradient of the um, of w. So now what I would do is take all four of those terms and put them in. Okay, so. So the gradient of r dot v is, the first term gives me an acceleration, r dotted into the gradient of the time. The second term gives me the velocity minus the velocity times the velocity dotted into the gradient with the time. The third term gives me an r crossed into the acceleration crossed into the gradient of the time. And the fourth term gives me the velocity crossed into the velocity crossed into the gradient of the time. So you notice in every single one of these terms, there is a gradient of the time. Okay, <clears throat> so let's try and simplify this because I'm not going to remember all these terms. So if you remember that the triple cross product of three vectors a, b, c is b times c dotted into a um, minus c a dotted into b. Okay, so you know if we look at those those um, last two terms and what we're trying to solve, then we can work this out. Um, so if we first apply it to this triple cross product, we would get, so the acceleration is the vector b, so we would get acceleration times r dotted into the gradient of the time, um, minus the gradient of the time, and r dotted into a, the velocity triple cross product is the velocity times the velocity dotted into the gradient of time minus the gradient of time v dotted into v. So v dot v is v squared. Um, so, uh, so, okay, so now if I look at this, if I look at what terms I have, um, I have, uh, well, we can write it out. So I've got an A R dot uh, gradient of time. Um, but I also have a minus A R dot 
dotted into the gradient of the time um, for my cri triple cross product. <clears throat> um, and then I have plus V minus V, V dotted into the gradient of T. Um, and I also have left over, um, oh, minus plus the gradient of the time R dot A. And I have uh, minus, uh, oh, plus V, V dot the gradient of the time minus, v squared. Okay, so I can cancel some terms. So that cancels, that cancels, and what I'm left with now is v plus r dot a minus v squared times the gradient of the time. So much, much smaller um, uh, solution. Okay, so let's put this into our equation for the um, gradient of the potential. So my gradient of my potential is qc over 4 pi epsilon naught, 1 over rc minus r dot v quantity squared, times v plus c squared minus v squared plus r dot a times the gradient of the time. Okay, <clears throat> so really we can clean it up just a little bit more and that is we can try and find out what the gradient of the time is. So the gradient of the time is, um, what's that going to be? Well, minus C, the gradient of the time, is equal to the gradient of R, which is the gradient of the square root of R dot R. And so that turns out to be 1 over 2 square root R dot R the gradient of r dot r, like so. And now if we invoke another vector um, identity, the gradient of vector a dotted into vector b, we said was the triple product plus b crossed into the curl of a, plus a dotted into del operating on b, plus b operating on del, I'm sorry, b dot del operating on a. Okay, so there's those, those four things. Okay, so now let's work out what we have in this case. So the gradient of r dot r is the first term gives me r cross the curl of r. The second one gives me the same thing. The third one gives me r dotted into del operating on r and I get the same thing. So essentially I just have two terms to worry about. Um, So I have two times r crossed into the curl of r plus r dot del r <coughs> right there. Um, and so uh, anyway, so if we remember um, that the gradient of r is now 1 over the square root of r squared um, 
Okay, so those two terms. And so if we go back and say, what is R dot del operating on R? Well, we worked that out before. That turns out to be R minus V R dot the gradient of T. And then the curl of R turns out to be V crossed the gradient of T. Um, and so from our previous work, where we've looked at these um, operations before, what you get is minus C, the gradient of T is equal to one over R, R minus V, R dotted into the gradient of T, plus R crossed V crossed the gradient of T. Okay, so we're still trying to extract what the gradient of T is. Um, that last triple product we can write out as V dotted into, whoops, sorry, not V dot. V R dotted into the gradient of T minus the gradient of T R dotted into V, um, which means I can simplify this again. C times the gradient of T is one over R, the vector R minus R dotted into V times the gradient of T. Okay, so now we don't have any triple products anymore. I don't have any cross products anymore. <clears throat> um, so now I can just combine terms. And what I get is, if I multiply both sides by R, minus RC, the gradient of T is R minus R dot V, the gradient of T. So now the gradient of T is equal to minus R over RC minus R dot V, which looks very familiar because it's inside of our gradient um, of the potential term. Okay, so now if we put all of that together, the gradient of the potential is equal to one over four pi epsilon naught QC over RC minus R dot V cubed times RC minus R dot V times the velocity minus C squared minus V squared plus R dot A times the distance R. Okay, which looks like a handful, but it's actually a much more, a much cleaner expression than when we started this whole process. Um, for um, the time derivative of A, you can do problem uh, 10, 19 in the book, and what you get is the time derivative of A is equal to one over four pi epsilon naught QC over RC minus R dot V cubed <clears throat> um, times R C minus R dot V times R times the acceleration over C minus V plus R over C, C squared minus V squared minus R dot A times V. Okay, so we'll look at that in the next video.